Uh, we were discussing CVD. Uh, we also said that there are number of ways in which films can be deposited using chemical vapor deposits. We have listed this num different things. Uh, this is last time we did. And in VLSI, we said we need to have uh, metal films to be aged, the dielectric films to be aged, and also alloyed to be aged. Also, we need atmospheric pressure CVD to deposit uh, epitaxial films or growth that is called growing films, though it is actually depositions. The major important parameter which decides the growth or depositions uh, is decided by the thermal budget. How much is what is thermal budget? In a process, whatever is the furnace or any other annual cycles you go through the time and temperature what you use is called its thermal budget because it consumes wattage. Okay. So, its thermal budget also decides which process to use because in processes the last end of processing is actually should have lower thermal budget because earlier process should not change. So, thermal budget is a very crucial factor in decision where to use which kind of CVD. And of course, quality of films to be etched after our quality forms of the film desired to decide the choice of process. We discussed last time both APCVD and LPCVD. Okay. So, we have gone through all of it. I just want to show where, where we were. And we were looking for the first process which is the atmospheric pressure CVD in which in a system, in an APCVD AP system. Uh, you have a heater on which wafers are kept. This need not be on the conveyor belt. It is good if they are because then you can have larger throughput. The basically, may I have your attention now? Uh, you have a heater on which your wafers are kept. This temperature normally is around 400 degrees centigrade plus. Okay. And uh, you introduce uh, first nitrogen for the uh, clean if, uh, for the clearing all the gas stream here. Sometimes you also pass through hydrogen to etch out few things. That is called reduction. And then you actually add the process gas. In most cases, it will be if it is silicon based films, then it will be silane or trichlorosilane, dichlorosilane, or something of that kind. What is the procedure? The procedure is reactants must reach the surface of the place where they want to be deposited and they, they are kept horizontal. This is important fact, they are kept horizontally. From ambient gas stream, the reactant must diffuse through a boundary layer which we will discuss later. So, there will be a thin boundary layer on the wafer and reactant must, oh yesterday I showed you the film, sorry. There will be a boundary layer, stagnant layer as it is called and any new reactant has to diffuse through this to actually come and sit on the this. So, this is an important thing which decides the mechanism of growth or depositions. Then what happens next is this is what we did last time. So, I am now going this is what we start now. Once they pass through the deposition this uh, boundary layer, they are now at the surface of the wafer or substrate and there these reactants must get adsorbed okay, to stick there. Okay. Surface reactions then can occur and remember the surface reaction is decided by the heater temperature. At that heater temperature wafers are now held. So, the reaction must take place at that surface temperature which is typically around 400 to 700, 800 degree in most cases, but in epitaxial as I say it may be as high as 1100. Deposition occurs conformally. This is most important. Wherever the step is there, it will climb because gas can flow everywhere. So, it will conformally actually deposit. It will also have some something coming out of the wafer which is called emission and some may redeposit itself. So, there is a combination of deposition, redeposition, etching or what we call emissions and at the end some steady state is achieved. So, unreacted reactants and byproducts are dissolved and they are actually removed out of the system by vacuum, vacuum pumps. Okay. We can have a kinetics of such deposition similar to Grodel model and we last time discussed that this is what the model is something like. This is what we did, I am just trying to go through quickly what we did. Okay. And we say there is a gas stream flux and there is a reacting flux at the silicon 
and in uh, one is proportional to the Cg minus Cs through a mass transfer coefficient and in steady state the reacting which is happening to proportion to Cs must be equal. And then we derive this formula and we say okay Vy which is the growth rate which is F by N number of atoms incorporated on surface is N then Vy is Ks 1 plus Ks by Hg to the power minus 1 Cg by N. And then we also discussed last time that the gas reactant in a total gas system, whatever in a gas system and how much is available at the reactant surface, the ratio of that is called the mole ratio and that we defined as Cg by Ct. Ct is the total concentration in the system. Based on this, we finally arrived at an expression which is Ks Hg upon Ks plus Hg Ct by N into Y y is the mole fraction. We also looked into last time two cases, we say one possibility is Ks is much smaller than Hg, the other possibility that the Hg will be much smaller than Ks. Of course, so there will be a point where Ks will be almost equal to Hg and that is called the critical shift point. At that temperature one process shifts over the other, so something below higher temperature it will be mass transfer and below that temperature it will be reaction rate limited. If you see that graph which I showed you earlier figure, so you can see from here anything higher temperature it is constant with temperature means mass transfer limited and below it is function of temperature which means it is reaction rate limited. Okay, And we then discussed, this is all that we did last time I am just hurrying through them, now we say the reaction rate limited uh, constant Ks as we know it is always function of activation energy and temperature, K0 is called its pre exponent constant and uh, please remember Ks is a very strong function of T as one can see from here and the activation energy for the process. However, we also said that the mass transfer coefficient Hg is directly related to gas stream pressures and its diffusivity through the boundary layer. Since Hg is a very weak function of temperature, though it is a function of temperature but very weak function of temperature, it is normally treated constant. Please remember Hg is a function of temperature but it is very weak function of temperature. So Hg at after certain temperature we say it is almost constant, okay. though this can be verified by numbers and see how much it is, but normally this assumption is fair enough. Okay. What we are trying to say essentially if the gas is enough there, how much is reaction will be decided by the reaction rate, but how much is made, I can react as much, but you are not providing me, so it is mass which will allow me to limit it. So at higher temperature what happens that the reaction rate is very high. So anything can come and react with it, but the amount gas will now decide by how much you push, okay. So is that physics clear that at higher temperature reaction rate is very high. So anything, any amount you push it may react, but how much you push will be limited by that is the Hg term, okay. Whereas at lower temperature the you may have any amount of gas rece received at the surface, but how much it can react will be decided by the temperature which you have at that point. So this shift over is very crucial at some temperatures the reaction rate limited process goes to mass transfer limit, how much gas is available for reaction. Okay, so one can clearly say at lower temperatures Ks is much smaller than Hg and at higher temperature obviously therefore Hg is much smaller than Ks. Okay. Now if I look at this term, uh, I think you wrote down. If you look at this, if Ks is much larger than Hg and if you go back into that expression, you can see that Ks term will vanish, 1 upon Ks is very large, uh, small, so it is only Hg times something will appear there. So it is only mass transfer coefficient Hg which will decide the growth or depositions. Whereas if Ks would have been much smaller, Hg, 1 upon Hg would have been higher, uh, smaller and so that term would have gone and you will be only proportional to Ks times the other parameters. So Ks is decided by temperature, Hg is decided by available gas stream pressures or available molecules there to 
react ok. This is exactly what we differ between APCVD and LPCVD. This is what we are trying. We want to make a certain process only temperature dependent. So, what is the condition I am looking for? That at lower it process is normally at low, relatively lower temperatures where Hg is much higher than Ks, is that correct? Hg is much higher than Ks and then we say it is only temperature dependent. So, to make Hg higher, we will see now that the pressure as lower the pressure you do, Hg will start increasing. So, at lower pressures, Hg could be made higher than Ks, much higher than Ks. So, in low pressure cases, it will be decided by what? Temperatures. Once I say it is only temperature dependent, what kind of wafer wafers I can hold? I can hold vertical wafers. Why? Because I only look for their temperatures. In a furnace, I have hundreds of wafers, but they all can be held at same temperatures, 200 wafers or maybe even 400, depends on furnace size. But all of them should have same temperature. As long as the furnace temperature is constant, the deposition rate will be limited only by the temperature constant there. If delta T varies, yes, growth rate will also or deposition rate will change. Otherwise, any number of wafers can be deposited in one go. So, it has a large throughputs. Okay. Normally, polysilicon is deposited at low pressure. So, it is called LPCVD. Whereas most films like SiO2 or SiN silicon nitride which are mostly amorphous films, we are not really looking for structure. There is no uh, re real requirement for good structure, it is amorphous anyway. So, I can deposit at much lower temperatures, but then what I should do? Available gas should be sufficient for the thickness to grow, okay. And therefore, all mass transfer limited wa uh, conditions, wafer should be flat because gas stream must come there and start depositing. In the case of LPCVD wafers can be held vertical. So, what is the first difference between pressure changing that the throughput of a uh, all mass transfer systems or low temperature systems is very low compared to of course, the belt system which I showed you, you say yeah I do increase it, I push it as fast as I can, but after all I have to grow film, I, I must some retention time I will have to give for the gas. So, when it finishes that then only I will move out ok. And the way it is done is that if there is a conveyor belt and as I said 12 wafers are sitting and gas stream is moving like this and we maintain some velocity we will discuss, we may not discuss this. So, we know when the gas is flowing it is going all over ok. So, growth is varying every point in fact ok. So, the rate is so adjusted of this belt that at the end of the day everyone gets the same thickness. So, there is a belt speed which is very crucial to decide uniformities. Okay. Now, uh, among the most famous uh, uh, low temperature, uh, not low temperature, uh, the mass transfer limited cases is the growth of epitaxial films. The word EP stands for as it is, taxi means whatever texture. So, if you have a silicon wafer of some kind of 100 orientation or 111 orientation and I want to deposit silicon over it, okay. Why do I want to do it? Because this EP layer I can deposit uniformly. That is I can dope the wafer during growth itself. So, I have a P type substrate and I can actually deposit N type silicon itself of my choice of doping, okay, of my thickness requirement. In a CMOS if you have seen there is a P well and then another I created another layer for a VT uh, adjust. But this P well is sitting on a substrate. Okay. So, I can make instead of wells, I can actually make two different epitaxial growths with thinness. This is done in what we call the process called SOI process, silicon in, on insulators. Okay. So, silicon can be deposited also on insulators as well as silicon and these processes are very dominant now for the case of low power circuits, okay. SOI in particular. The reason why SOI has not caught the uh, what type applications and the so, this uh, epitaxial growth is a very crucial requirement nowadays, but uh, earlier it was done only for the case of tran bipolar transistors. We start with a collector N type okay, and then we deposit or rather grow epitaxial layer of P type 
which is constant base. Why we wanted that? Because we any earlier we never used to control the profiles, there were no implants. So we used want that doping of base to be constant. So base is to be always EP growths, okay. And then I will diffuse the emitter in that and I will have an NPN transfer which is vertical, okay, which is vertical. Those days ICs were not used F1, it was only single transistor making and then we externally used to connect. So in those days EP was major requirement for uh, bipolar processes. Even now bipolar processes do use EP but even in MOS for ultra thin body fin fat also there is a thin layer we want to have it so which is also EP it actually grown, okay. So there are processes for low power, low uh, threshold processes fast circuits, low uh, technology node, we still need EP layers, okay. The only problem with EP is it takes large temperature. Now this fact is very interesting because if you say that the process is related to temperature, higher temperature because crystallinity is to be attained, uh, one way of increasing the temperature without increasing this environmental temperature is to do plasma, okay. Plasma KT could be as 10,000 degrees centigrade can get to, okay. So therefore now EP layers may be probably grown by plasma processes rather than the normal thermal processes, which is not, I mean still some places when first process is itself is EP, you do not have to worry the plasma is costly and difficult to control. This in number of wafers can be deposited in one go. So EP is cheaper in compared to plasma, the throughput of plasma systems is always smaller than throughput for EP reactors. So please remember also there is one figure which book may also given you. Since the gas stream is moving from say left to right in this figure, uh, since the what is our condition when the gas goes over the surface it starts climbing. Why it starts climbing? Because the pressure there forces the gas to go up. So when you start here the gas outside may be what horizontal it is but when it touches the wafer actually it starts climbing. But what is the condition I want to hold is this. I want mass transfer coefficient which is given by diffusivity of gas to the wafer through the boundary layer by the thickness of boundary layer. So what is when I can make Hg constant when delta is constant is that clear dg is diffusivity which is known for a gas two gases. But what, how can I make Hg constant? If I make delta constant, what is delta? The boundary layer sitting. If this moves away, that means delta will start increasing, delta will start increasing, but in my case then Hg will vary. So what I do essentially is I put the wafers on an inclined plane. Since it climbs here, so the actual difference between wafer and the gas stream is roughly delta all around. This is all EP reactors you find has susceptor which is kept at certain degree which is around 28 degree climb, okay. So this essentially makes this delta constant and if delta is made constant, Hg can be made constant and if Hg is made constant, the growth is proportional to Hg. Is that clear? Since it is a mass transfer limited process, Hg is constant and therefore one can see higher temperatures, so no case related system. So everything is mass transfer and therefore EP growths are normally done at higher temperature to get crystallinity and also we must maintain the angle so that uniform delta is achieved, therefore uniform filled thickness is also achieved, is that clear? This is something which is very important in EP layers. If you want to dope this EP layer, Okay, so there are certain things, if you, do, you are write down, I will just give you what is, how can you dope a film? Let us say I was passing silane for silicon. So I should also pass diborane for boron doping, I may pass phosphine or arsine during this, so that mixture of silane and arsine will make N, N plus kind of this. The gas mixture decides the concentrations. Is that clear? How much ratio you keep will decide N or N plus, P or P plus, okay. That is how it is adjusted. So all EP layers are uniformly doped. This fact has to be always understood. What is EP's difference between normal implant or anything? No profile, it is uniform doping, 
Okay. And that is the feature of an EP growth. Okay. And I as already said where and where else the EPs are actually used now for single crystal silicon solar cells one of the method of making films of EP layers on substrates which is ne not necessarily silicon but silicon dioxide is essentially EP growths because they are relatively cheaper compared to crystal growths. Okay. I am not saying they are cheaper related to and they can be have a belt system in which films of silicon can be deposited and then you can make solar cells which are relatively cheaper, relatively is that word clear? So, do not think cheaper, relatively cheaper. So, solar cell people normally use all belt system because they want thinner films, they only want one junction and they want larger throughputs, cheaper throughputs. So, most of the time films are used in the, their techniques. In VLSR we need sometimes depletion regions to expand, expand which means I need region there where it can expand. So, I will actually expand N deeper P sideways so that my depletion layer goes down. So, there are difference in device characteristics and MOS devices and in the case of solar cell which is normally a normal PN junctions. Okay. Okay. Uh, typically if you have written down this, uh, most cases the process which is does not use silane then it normally uses either use silane or normally silicon tetrachloride which is actually a liquid is used in most often. The reason is whereas silicon tetrachloride is very less toxic. So, two achievements are getting. The ga uh, liquid which I use can be vaporized by 100 degree centigrade. So, I get a silicon chloride vapors and also it is less toxic. Whereas, if I use silane it is not that toxic or very little toxic, but it is extremely highly flammable material. Little bit of heat extra and pressure increase it will blast. Okay. So, we avoid it and it is not that we do not use it, we use silane as often as possible, but just for the heck of it we say why it is tetrachlorides. So, silicon tetrachloride reacts with hydrogen to form silicon and HCl, HCl is taken out. Uh, one can see what many reactions actually takes place, like arsine actually decomposes into arsine and 3H2, arsine gets attached with silicon. Uh, at this temperature there is sufficient diffusivity. Silicon plus SiCl4 can form dichlorosilane. Dichlorosilane will further react with hydrogen to create silicon and HCl. And this, of course, there is another process which is trichlorosilane based process. The cost of process is decided by what dichlorosilane, trichlorosilane are used. The, for example, to grow a polyfilms, the if you are using a dichlorosilane, it is the costliest process. If you use trichlorosilane, it is cheaper. If you use silicon tetrachloride, it is even cheaper. But since the throughput will be less with silicon tetrachloride, so normally trichlorosilane processes are used in crystals or uh, uh, polyfilms. Okay. All ingots you have seen in crystal growth were actually using trichlorosilane process. So, you add arsine, you get phosphor arsenic, you add phosphine, you get phosphorus, you add diborane, B2S6, you get boron. So, depending on the mixture ratio, one can decide the concentration and thickness of the film. Thickness is decided by the time for which gas stream moves in. Okay, so, before we quit this area, I may just tell you some maths I did which may be interesting for you. Uh, I said very casually, I, may, I say, okay, if you reduce the pressure, Hg increases. So, I will now prove that Hg does increase uh, this. In LPCVD, the pressure is reduced. Typically, it is around 300 millitors of pressure, 300 to 600 millitors of pressure, which is maintained. Some uh, LPCVDs have also been done at 1 millitor, but they are different processes some other day. So, obviously, we know the diffusivity of gas is proportional to the total pressure of the gas stream there. Okay. So, we now want to look for this pressure dependence and as I keep already saying, I want to have Hg increasing such that I became, I move away from uh, this and I get some kind of constant Hgs. Okay. This is what my game is. If I change the pressure, Hg increases, 
and then if you plot that same characteristics Hg becomes higher and higher and finally becomes flatter at lower temperatures okay that is the idea. Typical temperature of polygrowth is around 300 to 700 degree centigrade, 300 is not good films, why 300 is not good film? Polycrystalline requires some crystallinity, so lower the temperature it will more amorphous material so you will annihilate, once you annihilate you already increase the temperature okay, so that whole purpose of reducing temperature may not be worthwhile. Uh, you can do after taking them taking the gas stop. What? Uh, anneal can be done anytime, anywhere. In the furnace where we are doing, you pass stop all gas, pass nitrogen, anneal. Okay. You can take it out, pass through a RTP system or a RTA system, you can do anneal afterwards. Anneal is not a process which in general in situ is preferred because wafer takes out means you need to clean it again before you anneal. Inside furnace you hold it actually, okay. so you change the temperatures or there is a, the way it is done is there is a different zone where anneals are performed in the same furnace. So wafers are pushed there by track, the temperature is different whatever you set and pass nitrogen heavily on that anneal whatever time you want okay and then pull out the wafers. Numbers, I can stack 100, 200 wafers on a rack. Is that clear? For the Hg limited what is the condition? It should go on the surface. So I have to keep wafers flat. So on a susceptor how many 8 to 12 inch wafers I can keep? Whereas vertically I can have a millimeter gap between them and I can have in some 1 inch, 1 feet around 100 wafers. If it are 2 feet zone I may have 300 wafers. Okay. So I, I get in the same gas everything so many wafers can be deposited in one go okay. Whereas in other processes at mass pressure they need to have mass transfers flat process numbers are smaller. So why can't we have horizontal LPCVD okay there are two which I did not say but maybe you have asked it so. See the problem with all horizontal reactors is uh, unless the temperature outside the wafer susceptor is very low, there is a contamination of particle from the walls, so which actually sits on the wafer. So you are, you are, there is a purge system, you got every few this you actually stop the gas and purge the particles. So it is a difficult process to maintain actually. So preference is always given to vertical where even if it falls, hopefully it will not touch the all wafers every surface, okay, may fall down. So normally preference is always given to vertical holds okay. but wherever necessary there is nothing else I can do. So I will try some best to see it is less contaminant but flat. Okay, okay having, having said so this is something more interesting. I said I want to look for pressure dependence and I want to prove Hg is increasing that is what I said. I said Dg is proportional to total pressure and typically it is found for the most of the systems which gas systems we use either dg is t to the power 1.75 and in some cases it is t to the power 0.5 so in this range roughly dg changes with temperature uh, we assume n dg proportion to 1 sometimes and say very little change it occurs okay. but it is strongly function of total the, the, as I said dg is not independent of temperature that is what I keep saying. So the dependency can be taken care through this term as well. Viscosity mu why viscosity has appeared suddenly anyone? Material science man kaha viscosity? Whenever a gas stream or fluid flows what is the uh, mechanism of fluid flow? It follows either the disturbed flow or it is called laminar flow. Laminar flow is decided by Reynolds number. Reynolds number is OUL by mu, okay. So viscous means it will drag itself, so it will move with lower velocity, so stream velocity drops in fact, okay. So more chance of contaminations, okay, and more chance of boundary layer not uh, properly adjusted. So normally the laminar flow is adjusted through the stream velocity and as well as the viscosity. Okay, this year I am leaving many much of the chemistry uh, 
but ठीक है viscosity is beam is proportional t to the power 2 by 3 and normally it is not a function of total pressure okay. Uh, okay I will leave it to you to figure out PV is equal to NRT is the formula ideal gas law says maybe I can write here for you PV is equal to where R is the universal gas constant N is the substance or amount of material reactant you have per mole okay. and uh, T is temperature in absolute temperature, V is the volume of the gas, P is the pressure. Now think of it, this can be converted to P is equal to actually you should write rho R some dash you should write rho R. This is modified universal gas constant R dash which is essentially R by M okay, some other day some gas law padho thoda sa. So whatever is PV is equal to NRT formula which uh, who actually gave this formula? Clapeyron actually created this equation after learning that pressure is proportional to temperature and volume is also proportional he actually made this equation together from Boyle's law and the other law okay. So please do not think it is it is actually Clapeyron's equation which is PV is equal to NRT okay. But somehow it always got to Boyle and everyone gave credit everything to him okay. But just to be history I may tell you okay. Okay so rho is atomic mass density rho is proportional to Pt and rho is also inversely proportional to temperature. Gas stream velocity u, the net velocity of gases going through in the system is not a function of temperature, it is only how much pressure backside I push the wave, gas in okay. However, it is function of pressure to some extent t to the power minus 0.9 many times one can take it is inversely proportional to Pt. Now let us do the game. You, I said okay reduce the pressure. So one atmospheric pressure tha, usko thousand time reduce kar diya, low pressure okay. So 760 tor to 0.76 tor okay, thousand times that is 760 milli tor kar diya, ek tor se, seven, eight, one atmospheric pressure se, atmo, atmospheric C, why we are comparing with that because earlier process was atmospheric pressure CVD. So, 760 torques ko 1000 time pressure niche le aya. Yeah, 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 it is, yeah, it is for different gases diffusivity is different, okay. So, it varies somewhere for each. So, in normally we may not even consider that, but I just show you dg is not independent of temperature, which I earlier made a statement, okay, dg is a function of temperature, okay. So, okay, uh, in that case, Assuming that temperature dependence is smaller, dg1 by dg0 is the ratio of pressures. If I assume it is Pt, dg is proportional to uh, only Pt first term. So dg1 by dg0, g0 means atmospheric pressure, this is at the 1000 times less pressure. So dg1 by dg0 is 1000 times, that is what you reduce the pressure. So ratio is this 1 upon hai na? So ulta ho gaya u1 by u0 is some proportionality I say c, c p1 to the power 0.9, c p1 p0 to the power 0.9. So it is p1 by p0 to the power, roughly it is 500. So the ratio is 500 for u1 by u0, dg1 by dg0. Of course this I am neglecting temperature, we can add that if you wish. Then similarly rho I know is proportional to this, so I say rho1 by rho0. In this assumption is temperature is held constant only pressure is reduced. So I am only right now looking pressure dependence, okay. So rho 1 by rho 0 is 10 to, is that point clear? Temperature is held but pressure is reduced from 1 ta, one atmosphere to 0.76 tors. So rho 1 by rho 0 which is proportional to one, Pt, so it is now 1000 times, okay. So now I, what this material science, pseudo chemical, pseudo whatever it is, uh, person should know is the Renard number which is described as rho u L by mu, L is the length over which gas passes through, susceptor lengths, okay. So 
rho is the atomic mass density, u is the stream velocity, l is the length which is constant for a process and mu is the viscosity. So if I take the ratio and I want what kind of flow, why I want laminar? Because if the particles themselves collide, then there is a diffusivity will be various and different angles. I want everyone to go through down. So I want laminar flow and that is decided by the null number. Typically less than 8000 is expected. RL0 by RL1 is rho UL by mu, mu upon rho UL, mu is independent of pressure we said. So it is rho 0 by rho 1, u0 by u1, L is same for both susceptor lengths. So roughly it is 2. If we require figure it out, the boundary layer is proportional through this to Renal number is 2 third L by RL root RL. This boundary layer is related to laminar flow and susceptor lengths. Okay. So it is 2 third L upon root RL. Okay. So now delta 0 is 2 third 1 of L upon RL 0, delta 1 is 2 third L upon under root of RL 1. So delta 1 by delta 0 is RL 0 by RL 1 under root which is root 2 because we got this number 0, 2. So delta 1 by delta 0 is root 2. Now Hg1 by Hg0 is Dg1 by Dg0 delta 0 by delta 1. This is 1000. This is 1 upon root 2 means 1.41. So Hg1 is 700 times Hg0. Of course, these are not exact numbers, but the proportionality constants are not true in all pressures or all temperatures, but assume right now. The idea is to show you that if I reduce the pressure 1000 times, the mass transfer coefficient will be as large as 700 times the atmospheric pressure. So it just by in a furnace, if I reduce the pressure, I can increase a G. And if I can increase the G, then what is the process will be limited by temperature. So vertical stack and everything is possible, uniformity is temperature dependent, how good temperature you maintain. Okay. In a vertical you cannot create laminars, is that point clear? The gas has to go like this, like this each wafer. Laminar is always attained when it, you are in a surface. In a vertical, the gas cannot be streamlined very much because the wafer size and the tube size does not allow laminar systems. So, kaisa gas jata hai? Ek wafer ke andar jayega, phir bahar aayega, phir jayega. So, it is unlikely to create any laminar flows. Okay. Oh, no, it is not. That is what I say because depend on the size of the tube and size of the wafers, laminar part lengths, susceptor lengths. So, Renal number changes with the size. Yeah, yeah, so you have to worry all the time how, how to maintain laminarity. It is not very easy, but they are not dependent on mass transfer, so you need not worry. I am only depending on the available gas is not my choice. I want temperature, any amount of gas will react there. Temperature will decide how much to react. Is that clear? That is the game. I want to see it is only temperature dependent. So I must increase my Hg somehow. So I figured out if I reduce pressure, I will increase Hg. Okay. So this why I said you earlier that how from I, when I said Hg will increase if I reduce pressure, I just did some calculations. There are some small mischief which you cannot find, but truth is still same. I can also do similar thing for temperatures and I did that. If you are written down please. So I, is that proof clear that why the, if I reduce the uh, chamber pressure, the mass transfer coefficient will increase as much if not 1000 but at least 700, 800 times which means case dependent depositions will start because Hg will be much larger than case. So that is the purpose of doing all this. Okay. So you can reduce the temperature, you can increase low, you reduce the pressure and then you have always temperature limited processes. Okay. This is a method which is in mind. So anywhere I can use this, oh I must reduce this, I will get this. They have to, even oxidation. But there also it is thermal limited. There also we, the process when I start wafers, I said Ks is much smaller than Hg. So any time Hg is larger, I will always be safe. 
luckily in the case of this, the silicon dioxide allows you in the oxide growth, the diffusivity is another term which is helping you, okay. So there is a, that term is not available here, okay. So if I do it, it is imperative that Hg increases when I reduce the pressure. A uh, similar analysis was done by me and now I do not want to show every term. Uh, I only give you the data dg is proportion 1 upon p, dg is proportion t into 1.75, the viscosity is t to the power 5, actually it varies between t to the power 0.66 to 2 third, many people have different versions, rho is proportion to p and rho is also proportion 1 upon t and if I now temperature is lowered down by t and if I do the same analysis which I did for pressure, DG, every calculation I perform, typically I get Hg1 by Hg0 root 2 times. So, it just, so even if you reduce the temperature by half, your Hg will at least double, is that one or at least one and a half times it will become. If you reduce pressure, it redu increases enormously. But with temperature also it actually increases but you can see I told it is much smaller dependence. So it's, it does change with temperature but not very strong functions. Is that point clear when I made a statement I just wanted to show you the change is much smaller even if I half the temperature. From 900 if I go to 450 Hg is hardly increased by 1.4 or 1 and a half times. Whereas in the pressure if I reduce 1000 times, I am just going away 1000 times in pressure this Hg. So this fact is actually used in all LPCVD, APCVD, every system which I actually use in my, this is in my mind. If I do this, this will happen, okay. is that okay? I, am, I have done all this analysis for this also, I am now giving you final results. You do same thing which I showed you for all terms make division, row you everything and figure it out whether it occurs, which occurs and this is my result, okay. So you can also do it. No, there is no delta, na. Hg is so high that means delta is very small, that is exactly is the point. So almost all gas is available on the surface. Uh, so there is no diffusion required because gas is right now so much available, it is only how much it can react decides. Is that clear? Hg higher essentially means there is no boundary layer very much. The gas velocity is good enough to actually make system only temperature dependent. That is the way we do it. Okay. So typical pressure I said you know, LPCVD normally for polysilicon is done around 300 to 600 millitors are pressures. 0.3 to 0.6 torrs is all that pressure we maintain. Temperature is typically from 400 to 900 sometimes, but 750 is all that we try. Same way you can do silicon nitride. Instead of poly, if you want, you add ammonia along with silicon, okay, and you can do same LPCVD, okay. So you have depositions of silicon nitride. Any film can be deposited if as long as mixture is made at that pressures. Of course, these are figures which are given, taken from uh, circuittoday.com website. Uh, I do not want to actually, just I want to show you the actual, there are number of kinds of, there is a horizontal reactor, there is a vertical reactor, there is a cylindrical reactor for repeats. Uh, the advantage of each system is the throughputs are changed. Like there is some, in this actually there is a hexagonal system. This cylindrical system has hexagon or octagon. So each may have six wafers, this and it rotates, okay. So there are methods of improving throughputs. This is available as I say please note down this site which is www.circuittoday.com. So this is a standard EP reactor. Also, uh, okay I forgot but maybe most uh, EP reactors do not use thermal heaters, okay. Uh, what is the purpose of this? I just want to make it clear which I did not so far. I only want temperature of the susceptor to increase. I do not want the whole tube being has higher temperature. So if I make a resistive heating, what will happen? The whole furnace tube will get heated. 
is that clear? So, I now want only the place where I want reaction to be heated to a temperature of my choice and the rest should be cool, okay. it is called cold walled reactors. Then how will I heat this wafers? The only possibility is through induction heating. So, this is a graphite susceptor inside which there are rods okay, which acts like a and the resistor acts uh, graphite acts like a resistor across the transformer coil equivalently okay. and the outside there is a transformer other coil you actually create RF uh, inputs there at high frequencies this induction heating will allow this susceptor to heat okay. So, what will be heated only the susceptor of course, it will some temperature will increase of the because it will degas some way, but most of the time it is only susceptor is heated, but the walls are cold. So, these are called cold wall reactor, cold wall, walls are at room temperatures. Same thing is possible in plasmas, the walls are cold, but the place where you want can have higher temperature. So, this whole procedure is associated to make it cold wall systems, is that clear? Okay, uh, there are other same from the same uh, site. I have taken just figures of others. This is LPCVD. This is APCVD. You can see vertically stacked wafers. Do you see? It's all AP, LPCVDs have vertical stack wafers. Uh, this is of course belt system for atmospheric pressure. Then there is another process which is called PECVD, plasma enhanced CVD. Now here the susceptor keeps is here which is heated through a house, sample holders, these are vapors, okay. this is a gas inlet and uh, this is RF input at the other electrode. Using a plasma I can actually create deposition of any gas which is ionized, is that clear? So this is a gas enhanced CVD. This is called low temperature PCVD which has actually a normal zone and then you actually create at the some point internally plasmas on the wafers. Okay. So, it is a localized plasma reactors. This is very costly system uh, which is actually called hot wall because the others are actually in furnace. So, this whole tr track is pushed inside in a furnace. So, if this process allows you to make even crystalline silicons. Because higher temperature you get it out, plasma actually allows you to deposit and it anneals because of external temperature. So, you get actually epigrowths. Okay. So, this reactor which is low temperature PCVD is used for epigrowths. Why this EP what I said? Because higher temperature externally will anneal it out, internally at low temperature you will deposit it out. Okay. So, it is one go or in same system you can create and since they are flats, they can always be uniformly crystalline growths. Okay. So, this is one possibility. Just for the heck of it, I will quickly read through. APCVD is mass flow deposition system. Low temperature depositions are not possible. Hot wall plasma could be possible, that is what I said. The biggest advantage of this is uniform growths or depositions larger dye wafers and uh, you need lot of gas actually, you need huge amount of gas actually. Why you need larger gas? Because whole tube has to be filled up. Please remember many, you, I do not know any, if any one of you is doing any process in the lab and any time you are growing poly or anything, please see that what is the tube size and, uh, and what is the volume of that tube. What is the volume? pi r square into length. At any time amount of gas should be sufficient that it fills up this volume. Otherwise there will be pockets and actually vapor may break because of stress. Okay. So, even if you are doing in a any other gas stream the gas requirement is very high depending on the size of the furnace 80 liters a minute to 100 1000 liters a minute flow may be required. So, very huge gas flow. And how much gas you will use? Very little few cc's, 100 cc's, okay, and the rest will be just going away, okay. But that is the cost, okay. So, APCVDs are costly in the gas systems, waste the too much of a gas, requirement is smaller, but it has to be maintained because it has to fill it up all the time. 
Uh, this is given in the circuit today, you can read this. Uh, this. For example, for LPCVD, if you do APCVD, there is a poor step coverage. If you do LPCVD, you have excellent coverage. I already discussed LPCVD, typical temperatures. Okay, before we finish this area, maybe I have a one interesting figure for you. There is something which I will put it on the web today myself. This uh, you should know, but I know you do not know. So, <laughs> so, I have actually written down all units which are required in CVDs okay, or anywhere else, but at least more in CVDs or PVDs. 1 electron volt is 1.6 10 to the minus joules, which is 1.6 to 10 to the minus 12 hertz or is equal to 3.87 to the minus 38 calories or 23.5 kilo calories per mole. 1 joule is 10 to the power 7 hertz, 1 gram calories, 1 gram of calorie is 4.18 joules, 1 watt second equal to 1 joule is 0.24 calories. For pressure, 1 atmospheric is 760 millimeters of mercury, 760 tar, which is equal to 1.013 10 to the power 6 dynes per centimeter square as the pressure or 133.3 pascals, 1 dyne per centimeter is 7.5 10 to the minus 4 millimeters of mercury, 1 pascal is 1 Newton by meter square which is 0 0.0075 tar, 1 bar is 7.50 to 10 to the power 2 tar and 1 bar is 10 to the power 6 dynes per centimeter square. So the units in each processes is different. Yesterday I did give you some kilo calories conversions okay, because specification from thermodynamics may come in one unit, but for evaporation and water units we are using we will have to convert to E V per mole. Okay. So whichever expressions I give I do define which unit I am having. So and maybe I will this we can get finally in exam also. So that you must convert properly to the units. Is that clear? Otherwise, that numbers will be ori. Okay. So this unit calculations, bar to Pascal to uh, to the tar, is very crucial because some people may say 2.3 bars. You will say, what is this bar now? Okay. So I just tell you that there are number of ways in which pressures, temperatures, energies are mentioned, and therefore some conversions are actually needed. Okay. So this is. Uh, taken from variety of my old notes, I finally copied once for you, okay. So that you know now what is, uh, so if I see just some expressions say all these uh, years, 6 months I am teaching, 4 months, different times I have different units in that expression because like current I want something in centimeter something something. So I always, but this actual data may come from other areas. So they may give something so much dynes per centimeter. Now you are asking force you want now in terms of pressure, so you must convert, okay. you must convert, okay. is that point clear? Okay. So this is a LPCVD, typical pressures is 30 to 250 Pascals, uh, 300, can roughly say 1.3, so it is okay, 10.3, 300 to something like Pascals, uh, tors millitors, 5 percent accuracy is only possible, advantage is excellent uniformity, very large number of wafers can be kept, large throughputs, large loads, larger dia wafers can be kept because any size as long as tube can take that size is fair enough. For a 8 inch wafer, what should be the tube dia? Then it will never fit. Do you know why? Because the rack, this is a cylinder, uh, circular tube the rack will take one quarter of, of that, is that clear? Then you have an 8 inch, then you need 2 inch clearance. So on an average for 12 inch is minimum required for 12 inch wafers, okay. So you can see 8 inch ke liye 12 inch ka tube, 12 inch ka tube kiya hai pi r square bada hai aur length aapki to badi hai, so gas flow bada diya. So if I work on 1 inch wafer, I can get same result, but if I had to transfer to this, I need huge system, lot of cost. Okay. This is the problem with our labs. We cannot shift to higher, suddenly say wafers of 3 inch are not available. So now convert it to 6 inch. 
they may say so, but here all tooling if I had to change, next 100 crore kidder se lana mujhe bhi nahi pata, okay. Uh, anyway, the deposition has uh, only problem is low deposition rates generally and there are toxic gases are involved, okay. Wafer as a quartz ka rack rehta actually, jiske upar slot, slot mein dalte hain, slots rehte hain usme. So, wafer uske andar adakti hai. How will I hold the wafer? So, there is a slot in, see, in the rack, a flat rack rehta hai, jiske niche kar part rehta hai, jo hold karta hai. उसमे ऐसे स्लॉट कटे रहते हैं तो वेफर हर एक वेफर एक एक स्लॉट में जाता है एक यू कॉन्ट कनेक्ट टू इच अदर ना गैस कैसे जाएगी सो so, गैप तो रखना ही पड़ेगा ना दो स्लॉट के बीच में वेफर जाने के लिए गैप तो रखना ही पड़ेगा दिस इज अनादर सिस्टम विच वी डिस्कस्ड प्लाज्मा एन एंड सी वी डी नॉर्मली इट हैज ए रोटेटिंग वेफर होल्डर देन यू हैव ए प्रोसेसिंग ग्लास देर इज ए आर एफ सिस्टम Uh, we will discuss this little later in etching, so I do not want to right now discuss. Uh, advantages of PCVDs are that low pressure as vacuum should be as low as possible, okay, as higher. At lower temperature, it produces uniform layer. Uh, multiple use of this system, it need not be one wave, any kind of wafer can be used and it does not spoil very much because it is only plasma ions strike only targets. Okay. Yeah, there are many more variables. In the plasma system, RF ka matching hona chahiye, distance hona chahiye, negative glow kitne dur rakhna hai, there are many requirements to fit in and it is very costly. Sabse bura hai ki uska uh, throughput is kam hai. This fi figures do not draw because these are available on circuits, no, yeah, it is all on the circuit today, this, though this model which I am showing is for do corning. ये ऐसा सब सिस्टम जो है अब आपको दिखाते हैं कि एक्चुअली दिखता कैसे दिस इज योर पी सी बी डी दिस इज फ्रॉम प्लाज्मा लैब्स विच इज सिस्टम ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड सो ठीक है सिस्टम हंड्रेड ये एग्जॉस्ट पाइप है यू हैव टू कनेक्ट इट आउट थ्रू स्क्रबर टॉक्सिक गैप बाहर नहीं जाना चाहिए बहुत कुछ चीजें करना पड़ती है बट दिस इज द सिस्टम विच इज पॉसिबल द लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट ऑफ दिस प्रोसेस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ डेज and which is called atomic layer depositions. The last but not the least important uh, is atomic layer depositions, very, very important process these days because of uh, all lower node technologies. This is essentially, you can see here there are two gas stream entry which is called 1 and 2. Uh, one is actually used for some purpose too, I will just discuss that. Then there are wafers, okay. Then, uh, there is a susceptor, there is a some sort of system in which gas is passed and deposited. Now, there is something which we do actually. First, the reactant gas is entered. This is called first process, step one, pulse of reactant gas, which is now at the surface of the substrate. I allow gas to come in, okay. So, it and it is temperature, everything is adjusted. So, it actually flows over it, okay. So, some atoms are dissolved there, okay, we will come back to it. Purge excess unreacted gas, then what do I do it? I stop reactant but pass purging gas, nitrogen in many cases, argon in some cases. You can see here the atoms are here and the rest of the gas is taken out, so it is called purge. Some layer is dissolved and the other part of the gas stream is taken out, okay, so it is called purge. Then your second Okay, this reactant gas is also in actual OLD system is called precursor. So, I thought I should write the name, it is called precursor. Uh, the reactant gas second time you have a precursor, in. this is called phase 3. So, you pass gas again, reactant gas. Let it further reaction take place and purge it again, okay. This you may have to more than once or more than two times for the thickness to be grown, but this is essentially called purge. Uh, this pulse 1, pulse 2, pulse 3, pulse 4 system in which atoms actually go and sit, first adsorbed, then react, then rest is going out and you get films, okay. This is called atomic layer depositions, ALDs. Now, if you want to add something to this film in the second pulse cycle reactant gas, you can add another reactant gas. If I want phosphorus to be added, I can pass phosphine through the second pulse, I mean second pulse or fourth pulse, okay. 
So, I can add also anything along with that, okay. but it is one cycle only one gas will pass. Okay. Why it is called atomic layer? Because atom by atom it sits okay, and that is why it is called atomic layer depositions, very uh, important process of today. Okay. You can see here first pulse this comes in, some of them sit, then it is purged, so rest going away. If they are more susceptible, it keeps going. Second, again you enter new ones, and then the purge. Okay. So every time you pulse, you add reactant gas. When you want to remove the after desorption, you want to remove the rest, so it's, you purge it out. This layer by layer depositions, which you can see here, atomic layer depositions. So very thin films can be deposited using ALDs. The growth rates can be as low as 10 Armstrong per cent second. So, it, it can be a mono layer can be deposited using ALDs. Accurate thickness control on a very wide range of materials, large area uniformity, operates at very low temperatures, no gas phase reaction, it is only absorbed and then reacted, okay, deposited. Disadvantage of course is low deposition rate, but that is what we need. In fact, we need low deposition, it can be an advantage. I want a very thin film, so I will use this. Reaction chemistry is quite complex, poor crystallinity due to lower temperature. So, silicon is not deposited uh, for crystallinity. Films which are non crystalline are easy to deposit in this matter. Organic materials, all kinds of uh, non silicon devices can be made using ALDs. Okay. Silicon, please remember this technology course was essentially highlighting silicon. But that is not end of the world. Okay. Uh, currently, there may be 30 percent effort in non silicon devices. Okay. Whether they will compete silicon in their next 20 years or 50 years is only God knows. People who are working there, they are not interested whether it will be technology or not, they want publication, so they will get it. But whether uh, this will finally replace silicon is very much unknown, and I am not very sure. Possibly, yes. Is that okay? So I have given you all kinds of CVDs. Okay, I also shown you PVD as well as CVDs. So any depositions can be made. Okay, so if I want to deposit tungsten, what should I use? Tungsten fluoride is a gas which is available, WF6, and you can go through plasma, you can go through sputter, you can go through anything ionic this and bombard that. So any material can be deposited by either PVD or by CVD. PVD of course not all, but CVD almost everything. Okay. So CVDs are much more popular, but why than PVDs? Because PVD deposits metals very uniformly. So most metallization systems use PVDs. If you have a target of that material, it's best way to do it. This is our last sheet which I discussed with you. Uh, Okay, so we start with quickly some other area which is of more interest than the one which we did, but we have now very little time to do it. Nothing can be done in VLSI unless you do etching, unless you do remove some area then do some processing. So removal is more important many a times in real life. The whole technology is decided by how good etching you do, okay. that is the major worry. Though that is coming last as if it is the least important, but it is the important process in all of it. So there are two possibilities in which one is called wet etching which we have been doing many years and of last 15-20 years we are working on what we call as dry etching. In dry etching also there are two kinds, one is a plasma etching which is essentially chemical etching but no ions there, dry. Then there is a reactive ion etching, the ions are present that it can also chemically react. Okay. Of course, third one is another dry one which is sputtering, sputter H, maybe I should add, which is actually bombarding this. Okay. So plasma also has three kinds of etching possibilities. These both of them, of course, this is less, this is isotropic, we will discuss this. This is very strongly anisotropic and this is also anisotropic but very low H rates. 
and much, much damage. Bed etching of course is isotropic. Isotropic world will come soon that is my job today to show before we leave. Typically as I said we need to etch SiO2, silicon nitride, silicon, polysilicon, metals, aluminum, titanium, molybdenum, tungsten, vanadium, copper. Then we need alloys and compounds like titanium oxide, titanium nitride, silicides of molybdenum, platinum, titanium, many, many materials we need to etch. And of course one which I did not write which we use etch every now and then, okay. What is it? Photo resist or resist that is removal is every now and then. Every mask you go you have to etch that, okay. Wet etching means solution based. Whatever is the you dip into solution and reaction will take place and etching will go. For example, for silicon dioxide hydrofluoric acid is a very strong agent for silicon dioxide. Uh, the typical reaction which I wrote is SiO2 is plus 6 HF is H2 SiF6 which is soluble plus water. If you have a nitride same thing process H2 SiF6 plus ammonia goes away and actually ammonia does not go, uh, it actually acts like this ammonium hydroxides, okay. Uh, you balance this, this equation is unbalanced. Whenever arrow is kept, it is unbalanced equation, it only shows forward reaction, okay. Otherwise you make equal, left is same as right, number of molecules either side are equal. Polysilicon is etched, polysilicon cannot be etched in HF because it is only, I already started telling you that one of the tests whether you are etched oxide is, you add water and you find it is not sticking, that means silicon has come. Hydrophilic acid only etches silicon dioxide, it does not attack silicon. But I need silicon etching, where, where do you need I need silicon etching? STI, I will etch STI, so I need silicon etching. At silicon etching I need something which is uh, uh, also of course polysilicon, if you have a gate of poly, you will etch poly, okay. So what we do is silicon can be etched in oxidized form. So what is silicon oxi oxi oxidation? Silicon plus some oxidant will make it SiO2 and then it will dissolve in hydrofluoric acid. HNO3 is a very strong oxidizing agent or hydrofluoric acid is also equal, if not equally good oxidizing agent. So I can convert HF plus HNO3 plus water, dip the wafer in this, HNO3 will oxidize the wafer to silicon dioxide and HF will remove it. Just for the heck of it those who are still in chemistry there, the HF available in the uh, which is called fully concentrated 100% HF is essentially 49% HF. What does that mean? The most concentrated hydrophobic acid has 15% water, okay. So please remember when you calculate you should treat 49% as HF when you say it is 100% concentration, okay. So calculations this ratio is from 49 and not from 100 cc if you take. So if you take 100 cc HF actually you are using 49 cc HF, okay. This has to be because those who are doing chemistry please remember this. This ratio is actual HF. So HF plus HNO3, this ratio is so adjusted that the rate of oxidation is matched by rate of removal. That is how the ratios are adjusted. You can also use HCl H2O for aluminum. You can also use orthophosphoric acid H3PO4 which also uses HNO3 plus H2O to H aluminum. Aluminum is a strong metal which was used till very late. Now of course it is gone. Uh, so one need to etch uh, hydrofluoric, I mean this H3 orthophosphoric acid. Of course there are, if you go to the plumber's book, there is a table given for all kinds of material, what kind of ratios of HF, HNF, all acids you must need. Whenever you dilute some kind of HF, it is called buffered HF, okay. Normally we, we add ammonium fluoride to it and we also add acetic acid, why? Anyone? Chemistry wala admi bol sakta hai. Why I add, instead of water I add actually acetic acid. What is acetic, uh, acetic acid? CH3COOH. This hydrogen ion concentration changes what? The pH of the solution. So when you do any reaction pH changes. For a uniform H, pH must be maintained. Acetic acid keep providing hydrogen so that pH is at least higher, th lower than 3 or 4, okay. So that it is acidic in nature, okay. So these are, this is chemistry thinking, 
how what to add or I must maintain pH. In etching one of the major requirement is what we call selectivity that means I have two films and I am etching. I want one to be etched less, less and the other should be fully etched like I put a photo resist on something and I am etching oxide. So etching which is removing oxide should not attack photo resist otherwise the whole purpose is lost lithography kya kyo. So selectivity of an etchant is very very crucial that two films it should have very different etch rates. Okay. So this selectivity is defined by term S and R1 is the etch rate in one and R2 in the other film. So the ratio of etch rate in one to etch rate of two is essentially called the selectivity. So if you want R1 to be etched faster than R2 then S should be larger if R2 should be more than uh, less than R1 then S should be less than 1. So that is how you maintain the solutions okay. or another problem with wet etching as such and this is the important figure. I started with a mask okay maybe resist or oxide now let us say anything it could be. This was the window I opened is that correct? This, this was the window I want to etch. But when I was etching the area below, I figured out that okay, this is not attacked, selectivity is good, the resist or whatever the other film is not attacked, but the lower film is getting attacked. So the solution which enters has no directionality. It will etch down, but it will also etch left side and right side. It is called lateral etching. Okay. So the solution comes it etches this side, it etches going down also. Okay. So the kind of pattern which actually you wanted maybe this was something like this. This is ideal pattern I wanted, H just below that, whatever the thickness, this is thickness shown this. But what would it do it? Sideways etching it will do. Okay. That means the actual pattern which I wanted to print has got extended. Is that clear? I want this much area, now I have got this much area. So my next mask does not know that. Okay. I thought that this is what window you will open, I will put something there, now it has gone out. Okay. The next connection here which is here may actually touch this now, but I separated thinking that that node allows me to separate by node minimum and I figured they are both are touching. Okay. So there is a risk involved. So this additional lateral areas or lateral sides is called bias. What is it called? Bias. So one B here and one B here. So it, is, it has a bias of B, one B left side, one B right side and this is the film actually you wanted H2. So let us say this is SF. So what mask is SM but what is SF? SM plus 2B. Is that correct? This is the mask, this distance is SM, mask H, okay. but what you really got the film etched out is SM plus 2B. So your pattern which you wanted SM has now become SM plus 2B. Now there is another problem, the thickness of the film which you are etching proportionately laterals H will also increase, B will also increase, is that clear? So you keep on etching down you also keep on increasing now. So the film thickness also matters how much B will get, is that correct? Thicker film if you etch, B will be much larger. So your pattern will be almost not there what you want. Okay. However, normally what we do is we will show you a figure, even after I reach an H and H, I put let this is up to 1, I still edge over edge something. Okay. Why? Well, I want this as flat as possible. Okay. This will be some circle. Na? So if I do further, so you can see, so I can get this area as flat as possible, okay. So I will little do over edge, but if I do over edge, additional B will come, okay. So the problem is I may get a good this transfer of image with a larger size if I really do weight etching. So do whatever it is, weight etching will always have higher size patterns than what mask is asking. So this is major worry in weight etching. 
typically to show you this, this last slide okay, for the day at least. We define a term anisotropy, okay. Anisotropy is defined as 1 minus h rate in lateral direction divided by h rate in vertical direction. If lateral h rate is 0, how much is AF? If lateral h rate is 0 as in the third figure 1, so the highest anisotropy is 1. What is the lowest anisotropy when the lateral h rate is same as the vertical h rate? So it is 0. So AF varies between 0 and 1. The worst is 0, best is 1. Best is 1. So, what is our ultimate aim? To make AF as close to 1 as can you see the third figure? The mask and the H is same dimensions. Is that correct? This is SF, this is SM. So, SM is equal to SF. That is what I wanted. I may play some game so that little bit bias appears. So now I have SM plus smaller side etching. So SF is not far away from SM, but it is away outer of this. And here SF is much larger than SM. So my whole trick in designing an edge system is from wet etching, I must try to reach this and ideally this. There is no system which is anisotropically one. What does that mean? Come what may, some lateral etching will be performed. Do whatever you do, even with normal ion etching, you do some lateral etching will occur. But our aim is that H rate should be much smaller than the H rate in vertical. If I do this, I will get highly anisotropic films, uh, H, H areas. This is highest anisotropy, 1. Whatever is the mass dimension, exactly same dimension is of the film. Okay. Is that point clear? So we will like to find out next time what is the actual film thicknesses you need and what is the limit you come, how close you can come because after all mass decision is designed by who? I say 14 nanometer nodes, I am telling him this much separation you can keep. Now if your separation, you told designer something, he has interconnect lines closer, what will happen? They will merge okay, or half of both of them will go. So my worry started that whatever I had told designers, it must be conformable to what I should give him. So I am trying to achieve AF equal to 1. How close I get? I normally may try by 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 1 I will certainly never get. Okay. This is roughly what next time we will do it and uh, uh, this is not very big one. Uh, last part of my course which is very important somehow I am I could not do anything on that, but some salient features I will definitely tell and I said 50 percent of industry success is on the back end designs or back end processes. We are still not finished with front ends. Okay. So the back end technologies make all the correctness of the design you worked. Okay. Firstly interconnects, all the process whatever you do is fine device, how good is your interconnect is decide the success. That is your back end. So the back end processes, failures, testing is a huge area in itself. Okay. So I will not be able to do in 30, 40 minutes. So I will give you some salient features, failures kahan se aate hain, kyun aate hain. Ek migration bola aapko, aur bhi junction pitting hai, there are many such issues. So I will just list them to you. Okay. So back end design, read chapter 11 if you need okay, more seriously. Uh, for more details on etching, chapter 10, at least read 10.5, 10.51, 10.52, 10.53, where modeling has been done, which I am not doing. Very small modeling, very cheap. I may write also, but model, model for etching. Okay. So we we'll like to show you how etchings are performed. Why I need models? Computer needs maths. Okay. So we must create models.